I just gave up labor. When you came along, you were like, bro, you got to take that hat off. I told one of your guys, I was like, yell at you every time he touches. <laughs> no, touches they actually film. do now. Why is your shop still packed? My closing rate when they're here at the shop is at 90%. Let's talk about that a little bit. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Autoful Mastery interview. For those of you who have not tuned in before, this is where we sit down with business owners who are absolutely crushing it in the automotive industry. We're here to talk about business tactics, business strategy, maybe some trends, but really we wanna get the best of the best strategies and secrets from these guys so we can apply that to you guys, the Autoful Mastery community. Today I'm here with Joe. He's a serial entrepreneur to say the least. He's the owner and founder of Art to Shine USA. One of Art them. Art to Shine Studios. He has a performance shop. He even has a sneaker. I mean, Paul, you got to zoom in on the kicks right here. <laughs> no, man, stop. That's in Berkeley, right? <laughs> but here, here's my thing. You know, I appreciate you. Appreciate you for sitting down uh, with me. Thanks I'm, for having us. I'm really excited to do this this uh, this interview with you, man, because you you got a lot going on right now. We're on the second floor of your shop here in Concord, California. It's northern Northern California, for those of you who might not know. But if I look over the railing right here, your shop is packed, and I know I know you guys really well. Your shop has been packed all year long. There's like three or four Porsches. There's a G-Wagon. There's a McLaren. And you guys are experiencing year-over-year year growth. So sure. I'm gonna, let, let me know, what is the secret? Well, I mean, it, it wasn't always like this, right? Um, I, started, I started about eight years ago mm -hmm. uh, with another coding company. I was one of their biggest flagship uh, stores. Um, I had a little bit of organic um, presence. Um, I never relied on marketing. Um, that's something where, like, I, I don't gamble. Right. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, when yeah, my yeah. mother in law takes me to, you know, to the casino, she'll give me some money. I'll I'll save half of it, I'll play like, you know, the other half. So that's that's who I am, right? <laughs> you so come I'm, back a little too soon. Like yeah, what happened? I, uh, you know, I, I was in my day. I'm a cheap Filipino. <laughs> in, in a sense, I guess. Um, but um in, in reality, you know, when when we switched and moved away from that brand and, you know, um had a chance to own my own coding company, that was always been my dream. Um I wanted to own uh, that company and say that that was my product company and, you know, when we made the switch of a name, that's when, you know, the very first year, that was quite hard oh, yeah. but to say, uh, just because, you know, people didn't know the brand, they don't know anything about it. We barely had any traction or a website even built. Um, and then, you know, in the second year, that's, this is where we explored MediaTune. Um, they didn't pay me to say this. This is all real shit. Um, <laughs> um, and, you know, in, in reality, you know, um, if you want to get transparent you know when we did art to shine the first year we were only making close to 400 right 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 um and you know before that you know in the very beginning you know i was happily making 100 200,000 a year um when I, we crossed to that 300,000 is a little bit more different and then finally when we turned media tune on like i remember the first first phone call when i had with you i said hey bro 30,000 in the first year uh, for a uh, first week Right. There it is. Yeah, yeah thirty thousand. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. first week. I was like, bro, like, how did you do that? I was like, bro, like, you know, you give me some leads, I'll, I'll close them, right? Um, but you know, now the, you know, the second year, or the first year we did with you guys, um, we crossed into the, uh, the seven figures. Um, the year after that, um, we had another ha half a million growth. So in, in reality, like, MediaTune did a lot and has a lot to do with, you know, with, with our success in our design. No, I appreciate that, man. I really do. But it, you, you as a business owner in general, you've always been forward thinking. You've always been really quick. You've always been on your toes. You've always been a great leader. I've noticed a lot of a lot of strong characteristics about you. And I mean, you 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 always network. You work. You 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 don't have that chip on your shoulder like you know it all, right? For I don't. Example, exactly. You're, <laughs> you you're big on collaborating. You're yeah. always asking for feedback. So as yeah. much as I would love <laughs> to, to take all that credit. Well, you know, and, and that's the thing that's wrong with this industry is like, you know, people yeah. don't share. That's one problem. They don't want to tell their secrets. They don't want to see other people grow. Um, and, you know, the, the, the last of it is they think they know everything. Like I've been doing this for eight years and I still look up to the giants, right? You know, yeah. I mean, let's just talk yeah. about like PFS. Let's talk about- How does it feel to, to, to be one of the West Coast giants? I'm not. <laughs> I mean, I, hey, I, I would make the I, difference. I'm not. I'd no, make I mean, differ. You know, um, I'm, you know it, I have a lot to, to learn. I have a lot to grow. Uh, but, you know, going back to like looking at like, you know, big shops like, you know, PFS, AFS, Aeroworks, um, you know, OCD and detailing. I mean, yep, they, yep, they, yep. those are the giants, right? I mean, that's something that I myself want to scale to. Um, but you know, and I, 
it, it's 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 a tough road for sure. Like it's not easy. I, and that's why like I always like to network with people because like I love to network with people that is giving yeah. and that wants to like help others and they want to see other people win. Um, and you know, it's a good thing for me to like, Hey, I'll, I'll call Joe, I'll call Mike, you know, or, you know, and just say, Hey, what, what, what I did. So even with you, right. Like I said, right. Hey, what do I need to do? Like, I'm not happy with this. Like, how can we keep growing? I, I don't like to be stagnant. You know, that's a problem. Do you think that that's one of the main reasons why you've always kind of had that look around the corner? You've seen trends. You've been ahead yeah. of the trends a lot of time. I mean, you've seen coatings. You've seen coatings come in. Boom. Now we're sitting here with a full line of premium. And you you were some big guys and nowadays on the coating side. Sure. You have a premium line of, co of coatings. And then at the same time, you said, look, we got to get more invested in PPF. I mean, how much PPF do you do every single month, right? So I, I, what, what allows you to kind of uh, see what's coming? I just look, I, I just see, I, I actually look at the big shops and see what, what they're doing. I mean, that's the truth of it. There's no secret about that. Right. 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 And you know, like before when I was with that other big brand of uh, ceramic coatings, I quickly saw the trend of like, okay, back then I used to like piggyback paint protection film to ceramic coating. And then when I started seeing a lot more inquiries about like, hey, do you do PPF? Do you do PPF? Now my business is, it's, it's hard for me to say this. I own Art to Shine. And this is where a protective coating company, but PPF is where the money's at. Right. You know, a lot of people are requesting for PPF because the truth of it is PPF has a lot more beneficial factors about, you know, when you're driving on the road. So ceramic coatings and my graphene coatings are really, really good too, but it doesn't provide you with the rock chip scratch protection. You that need both. Prote you need both, essentially. Like, you know, you got to, you got to, you know, package them into one to, to have either a full front coating or full car coating. I mean, it, it all goes hand in hand for sure. Now, what are you, what are you doing on the sales side, the marketing side, operations? What's your, what's your strategy on kind of overcoming all the competition that we see nowadays? Because we're, let's talk about coating. It's a very different industry in 2024 than it was mm -hmm. just a year ago. Two, three years ago, it doesn't even look the same anymore. There's a hundred times more coders in every single market across the country. Sure. You have people undercutting now. You're starting to see some of that with PPF, especially going through the fourth oh, quarter. People 100%. are getting a little desperate. Why is your shop still packed? It's more than marketing, all right? It's, it's, yeah. Um, you guys are constantly closing big deals. I think, uh, if I remember correctly, you started February off a little slow. Sure. And then you crushed February by the end of it. I mean, again, yeah. the shop is absolutely packed right now. It's, um, it, we couldn't even do the podcast downstairs where you have your big old logo. <laughs> okay. We're going to do it. I'm, 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 I'm putting this out there. <laughs> Apollo, you got to put a clip in. We couldn't even do the podcast downstairs because your shop is so packed. Well, you <laughs> know, great though. You know, all of it, like, you know, with marketing, right? So this is where I tell people like, yeah, I can help you and lead you to the right marketing team. Right. And then they'll provide you the, with the leads. Right. It's up to the salesperson or myself to close the leads. Right. So, I mean, you know, what I do differently with that is I don't, I'm by far, I'm by far not one of the masters of like, I don't consider myself a master of sales for sure. But what I do is, you know, I make it personable. Like I ask questions. I don't like say, when you call me, be like, Hey, I have a Tesla. How much is it? I don't tell you right away. I don't, I, I don't build up to it. I don't tell you how much it is right away. Like I don't put a, um, like, a, like a number to it. Like I ask you questions like, Hey. Um, hey, you know, what kind of car do you have? You have a Tesla? Oh, great. I have a Tesla too, right? Like I, I try to connect with the person. I ask you questions like, hey, do you, like, is this your daily driver? Is this your weekend car? Or like how many miles do you drive a day? You know, trying to get, you know, trying to get them to trust you first and then actually build like into like the sales process and what you do and, and, and then you sell them, right? And at the end of the day, like you got to have the client trust you. They, they got to, you got to put a, um, like a, a, you know, you got to put a number to that because at the end of the day, other shops might do the same thing that you're doing. But if they don't trust the shop or why they want to leave the car, they're not going to leave the car with you. How, that's a good, I mean, that is gold right there. Just a little, little tips you just gave right there. Absolute golden nuggets. How do you build trust on the phone? Like what is your approach when it comes to building trust so that you get that customer instead of the guy down the street? I ask questions. I, I literally do. Like, if I hear, what are your go-to questions? Um, like I, I mentioned some of them, or like if I hear kids in the background, like I, I, I use like, oh, you have kids? I'm like, oh, I do too. Like, hey, I know, I know you have a wide interior, right? And that's like, hey, I have a great solution for that problem. You find a problem, that's why they're calling you, and you find a solution for them, right? So, I try to just ask like targeting questions 
to gain something to use as ammunition to, you know, to my sales pitch before I sell them. And then that's how I build value for them. And, you know, what I do is I just try to be myself. I don't try to be pushy. I mean, there is a point where I know when to be pushy, right, right, like, right, cause right. I try to get them into the door. Like at the end of the day, my closing rate, when the client comes in here, it's in 90%. Oh, 100%. Oh, absolutely. You know, Especially well, when they see the, the yeah, when they see the facility, they see, um, you know, the clean rooms that we have, when they see the quality of work. I mean, my, my closing rate when they're here at the shop is at 90%. Let's talk about that a little bit because I've had some amazing conversations with uh, guys who are, are crushing it in business. And there's a notion in which I'm, I'm, I'm a full believer in that we are now moving into a in-shop upsell industry. Let me explain that. Window tint's a great example, right? Window tint, number one aftermarket accessory. It's hard to fathom how many people look for window tint on a daily basis. There's just that much demand for it. You know, the the big the big window tint shops, they're not they're not always getting every ceramic window tint deal on the phone. Don't get me wrong. If you build a good brand, that demand's gonna come and you're gonna get a lot of ceramic window tint customers. And ceramic window tint customers is what everybody wants, right? Big ticket, double three times the sure. times the ticket of an average tint job. But what I have found works best with some of these guys who are crushing it in window tint is they're masters at upselling inside the shop. Now there's a big argument that ceramic coating is now that it's That's a big, where it is yeah. as well. Well, that, because people piggyback that now. Right. Like even for me, like so, when clients call me for PPF, right? You know, when it filter, filters through the media tune um, algorithm into my, our tint whiz, um, I see PPF. I only talk about PPF. I don't throw anything else in there. Once I get you in the door and they see everything that we do here, that, I mean, that's my biggest, I think that's my strong side. Oh yeah. Like yeah. I'll turn a full front into, you know, like a five, $6,000 deal. Ceramic window film, um, you know, coatings, like that's how I get them, like a, a PPF job. So like, for instance, um, that yellow Porsche over there, that car came in for a PPF removal. Oh, okay. That's a twelve thousand dollar deal right now. No, what did yeah. you get? A, what did you uh, sell to? Full car, uh, full paint correction, full, uh, full, full car PPF, custom install, full ceramic window tint, full coating job. So I mean, that's an old phone. PPF though. You know, that's a two thousand one PPF. So, you know, that's where a lot of the charges went uh, just by for removing it. Right, of course. Yeah. yeah. So, so what 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 did the phone conversation look like? Can you walk us through that initial conversation because? You can't get to this size of a shop if you don't have a dialed in sales process. And clearly you always, ref I know you refine it. You've, you've put, you work through, you work through all these kinds of different objections. You have a, a detailed list of things that you ask, right? You talked about breaking ice before in the past with me. So what do you, what was your goal with that Porsche customer that just wanted a removal? What was the goal of that first phone call? Well, so the, the client actually lives in Florida. The car was purchased oh. here from um, a private dealer shop that I know, that I do work with. Yeah. Um, so the conversation from the initial email actually came through um, and I give, gave a client a call. Um, the car, I know for one, I, I gather information. Okay. The car lives, the car's gonna live in Florida. This is like his, he's a car collector. Um, so this is a car that he's gonna drive like on the weekends or, or da daily, whatever he wants to do with it. So like, once I gather information, like I can build like a story and an ammunition to like, okay, this is what I'm going to recommend. Why am and, I going to recommend? And are you selling or are you more consultative? It's consultative. Consultative. Yeah. Yeah. For, that, that's me for sure. First, like I tell my clients all the time, like, Hey, this is a free consultation. You come in here or you, you talk to me on the phone. That's a free consultation. I'd rather see the car first. That's why I tell them all the time. Like you can, you can give me uh, a visual, um, you know, assessment of your vehicle. And then when you bring the car here, that's completely, completely wrong. So that's why when I bring the cars in here, then I can point out the flaws and I can, you know, point out what we need to get done. You know, again, building trust. Like building and you're establishing, you're establishing yourself as that expert at the same time. Correct. They're like, oh, wow, this guy's not just going to give me a price. Yep. He's actually, I, I trust this guy. He, he yep. knows what he's talking about. He's not just blowing, you know, yep. blowing smoke. And especially like, you know, that's a 2001 turbo Porsche, 996 yeah. turbo, right? So it had seen better days at 40,000 miles. Um, the paint's in really bad condition from pictures. It looked really good. So I had my friend bring the car in as for evaluation, looked at the car, the car needed wet sanding, extensive paint correction, PPF removal. By the way, these PPF from back in the day, they're like, 
<laughs> fucking a lot thicker than what it is right now. And then being on the car for that long, we don't know the variables of like, but also on the client, we don't know how long, you know, the car is seen UV, you know, UV and adhesive when it like, when those two mix together, it's a nightmare to remove those. 100%. Right. Yeah. So, you know, and once I started pointing out, like I FaceTimed the client, I started pointing out, Hey, you know, I need to wet sand here. This has extensive paint correction. I measured the paint. Was that the first call though? Mm -hmm. it was a, you yeah. turned a phone call to a FaceTime. Yeah. Because okay. because they had his, he's buying the car side unseen. Write that down. Write that down. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, the, the, he, he's buying the car, he's buying the car side unseen. So for me as an expert that he trusted me with his car, I got to give my professional opinion about what it is and I have to show him these things. How often are you on FaceTime with people? Um, honestly, I... <laughs> Not gonna lie, I've started using that. Like, you know, with the Kia, uh, you know, with the Kia EV6, uh, the client's leaving out of town um, and I wanted to show him the vehicle first. So I was like, hey, you know, this is what the car looks like. So when you pick it up on Wednesday, you know, this is what it looks like. So, and you know, for me, like when I, when we do have the intake process of like, um, you know, marking blue tape, I got that from Mike, um, you know, is. putting blue tape everywhere, showing them. Um, if the client gets, if, cause a lot of our clients, Dave, somebody else drops off their car. Right. Like the client's not here, they're busy. Um, just like the Z06 Corvette that we had here, um, the client, very busy. He owns wineries and stuff here in Livermore. Oh, um, dude, I got like five cars from him after doing this McLaren 720S. Just, you know, building trust and showing what we do. But anyways, showing him the flaws in the car, he didn't really understand. So I FaceTimed him. So it actually works. I mean, technology, you use it. It's free. So right. on, the, on that first phone call, you fa you turned into a FaceTime, you're showing him, were you just focusing on paint correction? Did you yeah, focus so on? Yeah, that's, so that's really what he wanted. All he wanted was to me, for me to paint correct the car and ceramic coat, uh, graphene coat it. So now at what point did that turn into, I'm assuming a full body job? Mm -hmm. You got yeah, full, well, full PPF on the whole entire car? Yeah, correct. So because if I remove the paint protection film on the front, it's going to show a different color from the front to back, right? right? Because the PPF was protecting the paint from getting faded. So at that point, it turned into removal, full paint correction. And then I go, I remembered, you live in Florida. Florida is a lot more humid. I said, my coatings are very, very good at that from protecting it from fading and discoloration, right? But if you're going to have fun with the vehicle and you said you're going to track the car, I said, we might as well put the paint protection film in the car. At first, he wanted to do a full front. And I started building value to a full vehicle. Um, that's where that happened. And then the carbon ceramic window film from an nose attack. I told him, you live in, uh, you live in Florida. Are your cars tinted? He's like, yeah, I have a guy, but he's not really the best. But I was like, I have a guy that's been doing 15 years, man. There no is. problem. So I got that one done with ceramic window film and the coating. That's 12 G. Was that all in the first phone call? Yep. Oh, shoot. Okay. So that's an example of someone that came in. You, they, they, you, you had, you got him on FaceTime. You spent some a lot of time on the phone. Dude, with I was on FaceTime that? with him for about an hour, man. An hour. Well, you know. So it, you're saying you were rushing to get him off no, the call? No, okay. I mean my okay. my regular phone calls is typically from ten to forty minutes. Ten to forty. Yeah, I, I spend time with my clients. You know, ninety percent of my clients says, "Dude, like you gave me a lot of information." Sometimes I feel like I give too much information as ammunition for the next shop. Right, right. But right. for me, I want to be able to separate myself and spend the time with my clients on the phone and really go through the process and why you should choose me. Yeah, I'm so glad we're talking about sales. And, you know, this is something that I told you I wanted to talk with you about because I do think you have a just a, a really dialed in sales process. The industry has changed a lot, and especially from my point of view. I've just had that unique opportunity to advertise and work with shops in every major market all over the country. And I, I do sales training every day. I'm giving someone tips, tricks, pointers, or I'm sitting down with them, building. How come you're not giving me that? We've been doing that for years, man. Don't give me that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you do. He does. But uh, but my thing is, it's like there's more competition now than ever. Like the industry got what they wanted. We wanted more educated customers. We wanted more demand. Well, guess what? Now they have more options. Yeah. Right. They have more shops. They're more educated. So now they know. Okay, let me get a second price, a third price. So the sales com conversation has changed in recent years. And I'm talking, we're we're growing like crazy. We knew we were growing one or two years ago, but now if you look at reports in 2024, you have Tesla talking about colored PPF. You have Ford making an announcement recently. Those numbers keep growing. Yeah, we're, we're growing pretty fast. So now that you have this more educated customer with more options and more variety, well, now you're getting shopped on. January's brutal because people, 
You tell me if you didn't feel this during January. We're we're now. I, what, I actually March felt second? it more in February. February? Yeah. Well, that's even worse, right? March, February. It's one of the worst months to get shopped because everyone's broke. They just got back from the holiday season. They just got back from New Year's, right? Most people are broke, but they know they're going to get a big payday when tax when their tax dollars right. come in. So they're anticipating the money. They're anticipating buying that new car, but they haven't done it yet. Because it's not March, right? Not yeah. Around March is when people start getting their taxing their their tax dollars back, but they're still calling and shopping on you, preparing preparing for when the car comes. So I'm sure a lot of business is going to come in. That's March. me on a daily basis, man. <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it's gotten a lot worse because now they're showing cards, like cards. What I mean by that is they're showing our estimates to their shops. So you again, know. I'm I'm glad we're having the sales conversation because people need to know like the standard for sales. You have to raise your standards for that sales conversation. You can't rush off the phone like you used to. You can't no, you can't be so scripted or just be so, like you actually have to invest in that co- that conversation now. Yeah, I mean, like I have like a base like script, right? But you know, after that, I veer off from that just because of how how the conversation like would go to like, you know, once I, you know, once I start asking them questions, like I I can go through different avenues with that. But you you definitely do have to spend time with your clients, though. I mean. No matter if you spend 40 minutes of your time and you feel like you wasted it because they're not going to call you back, they're going to remember you Big at the end of the day because, like, dude, like, other shops are going to call. Like, dude, they spend, like, two, three minutes with me. I said, hey, this is a price. Now, do you do you have a follow-up strategy? Do you also follow up with a lead if they don't, if you can't get that, <laughs> that deal on the first uh, as much as I, as much as I As much as I can, I do. Um, you know, currently, um, I, I just gave up labor. This is, like, my second year of giving up labor. I was, like... I, a lot of these guys are the same thing. You're uh, you're the general manager, you're the salesperson, you're the the installer, you're the janitor. Everything. You're, you're, you're fucking everything. Wearing all the hats. Yeah. So um and you know when you came along, you were like, bro, you gotta get the fuck out of here. Like you gotta take that hat off. That was the, fun. Yeah. That was you know, fun. It, I'm like, stop it, installing. Yeah, you know how I told that... I told one of your guys, I was like, yell at Joe every time he touches. <laughs> no, touch they actually do now. They so when do. I, they when yell I, at you. Yeah, when I come down, <laughs> and when I get bored, right? Like when I get bored from like, cause I can't sit in the office all day. You know, that's not me. I have to like, I can, that's why I can never have an office job. Like I'm always up. I need to do something. So when I get bored up here um, and I, I, you know, I'm done with everything that I got to do, I go downstairs and try to work on things. And sometimes they will. And sometimes they're like, that's cool. No, no, just don't do it. I'm like, why am I not good enough? They're like, these, and then this is a, the, the messed up joke. They're like, you still remember how to do this? I'm like, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like, you know, they give me shit for it, but you know, it is what it is. They know my responsibilities. They know what I got to do because I have, I have, a, I have some monsters down there. I mean, dude, like if, yeah. if you want to be real about this, like one of my main PPF installers makes about 160 a year. That's a trophy, bro. That's I, a trophy. And you know, these guys, you know, I mean, these guys, like they didn't think that they would ever make this money doing this. I never thought about making this much money doing this when I first started. I, I started doing this because dude, I fucking love cars. I love shoes. <laughs> look at me you know what i mean like yeah, you know, yeah, i was yeah. blessed to be able to do what i love right um but then for these guys thinking that hey i'm in a ppf installer and i'm damn good at what i do i didn't think these guys can make 160 i remember ryan was saying his main ppf installers makes 250 yep my guy's close to that already one freaking guy Shoot. Shit, if I wish I, I'll trade with him. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, I'm just kidding. But you got those days, right? Everybody yeah. has those days. Yeah. Everybody yeah. Has those days. Yeah. But, you know, because they don't, the only thing that they got to worry about is, you know, um, installing. And my thing is, what I got to worry about, what I got to wake up for is, you know, my family and then my family here. Because I have a big responsibility to them. They, you know, they put their all into me. I got to put my 200 to them, more than what they got to give to me. I feel that I've seen this so many times. Most often business owners have two decisions that they have to make, right? They have to make one of the two decisions, I should say. Either one, they have to stop doing sales. It's just not for them. They need to find someone who's better at them in sales, right? There it is, right? You got <laughs> well. No, you're 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 you have a different problem. You now you're now you're you're a much bigger operation. Now you need like management, and there's all yeah. this stuff. There's all these other hires. But early on, when you're you're growing into, it's usually around the half a million dollar a year mark, right? If you just hit there, or if you've been there for a long time, maybe you're doing seven hundred fifty, and you have this this problem. But at that point, you have to either stop doing sales, or you have to stop installing, because you are the bottleneck of your business. Sure. What advice would you give to somebody who's <laughs> contemplating like, man, I really have to put down the squeegee. I really have to put down the spray, the spray bottle. Are you kidding me? Or vice versa. I have to trust someone else to answer my phones. 
Well, here's the thing, right? So going back to what I was saying, taking time with your clients is key, right? So when I was doing it, I remember clear as day, I was in this first clean room. I was talking to a client, should have taken more time with them. He went to my buddy's shop, gave him seven cars because I was in seven, seven freaking cars, bro. Um, I didn't know because this guy came in with a Tesla. Truth of it is, he's a car collector. My buddy got seven Ferraris out of it. I swear to God. And the thing is, I was installing because I needed to get the car out. The client, uh, this car needed to be done that same day. And it had a lot more work to get done. And I was on the phone while installing. And my mind was split into half. Like, you can't, you can't half-ass anything. When you half-ass your sales, it shows through your, through your verbiage. Big turn. You know, and it shows it through your mannerism, the way you sound and, you know, and all that. So I think that has a lot to do with it, you know, just because if you, clients can kind of, clients know when you're bullshitting, clients know when you're rushing them. Clients know when you're not caring about them. They're savvy. Clients, are, they, okay. they know, they yeah. see right through. I had a client. So Brian, our manager here, uh, I'm training him to take over operations, right? I had a client that walk in. Um, I spent about 30 minutes with him. I, every single time a client is here, Brian shadows me. I, I tell him, just follow me. Listen to what I'm saying. Listen how I treat the clients. Listen to what we talk about. Right. And just, you know, be a sponge, absorb it, right? Because one day you're going to be doing what I'm doing. And I spent 30 minutes and the client was like, dude, look, I went to five different shops. You're the only one that I saw that you really cared about me. You don't sound like you were bullshitting me. Because I really wasn't. I was being truthfully honest. I'm fully transparent with my clients. And sometimes, honestly, that tactic, I lose some, I lose some clients. Oh, yeah. You lose hundred percent. You lose them. But, but that reputation. But that's who turn. I am. Yeah. What happens when that person goes back home, they talk to their family and friends, or what if they're a car guy and they, they go to, they go anywhere, right? That one person, that one, uh, word of mouth can work for you or against you. Is yeah. What I'm trying to say. Sure. And if that one person goes and says, oh, no, they, he was so honest. Well, they might tell somebody that ends up coming in and it goes full circle. I mean, full honesty, that car, the that BMW X5 brand new, he came in. He came in for coding. That's all he wanted because that's all he heard about. Turned into a full body PPF, you know, full nice. coding, full tint. You know, just based off, because I gave him estimates when we were here, and he was like, hey, man, I'm not going to lie to you. He goes, I went to five shops, I said. And like, you're the first one that really cared. You're the first one that did sound like you're bullshitting. Let me, give, let me go back home. Let me review the estimates you sent me. Call me back 30 minutes. He's like, hey. Sign me up Monday, full body. <laughs> I mean, I'm just being myself. You know, like just, that. just be yourself. Don't don't lie to your clients. Like don't don't over promise to your clients because they can they can smell bullshit. Oh, uh, let's talk about that. What what expectations do you set? How do you make sure that you don't oversell? You don't over promise because that that'll get you a one star review. Oh, that'll yeah. get you. No, for sure. I mean, I, I I've been there. I I. I'll, I, I used to promise the clients the world, right? And that didn't work out so much. Right. Like, uh, like so basically what I do, like I tell them straight up, if like if there's going to be a, like, a, a, like a seam cut here because the film just won't go there, like right. that's a, how it's properly done for longevity, I'm going to tell you exactly how it is. Um, and, you know, I, I, I set the cars to stay here a little bit longer so that once I finish it faster, they're happy. Right. Because back then I'm trying to just, you know, accommodate the clients, accommodate the clients. But at the end of the day, when I tried to do that, it lowered my quality because everyone was being rushed, uh, you know? So, uh, so now I hold the cars a little bit longer. So at least if, you know, we have extra time to do something, if, if something needs to be replaced or something needs to get checked or fixed, we can, we have time for it and we're not rushing. We're giving some, you know, the, the PPF time to cure the coding, the cure and all that. So, I mean, that's what we do now. I mean, that's what we do differently now. What do you think your biggest challenge is now? Because to kind of give some more context, you guys are well into six figures a month at this point. Um, you, you threw out some numbers earlier. At this size, what what do you think is your biggest challenge? What are you, what is your ambitions going into the new year in twenty twenty four? I mean, my my biggest challenge for sure is you know the, the the growing pains, right? It's I'm not used to like back then. I'm only used to one one employee. Yeah. Like now we have what, seven, eight employees. Um, there's all the departments there. I just took in one more uh installer, so like but nine installers, I mean nine people here. Um, it's the logistics of like planning of which department goes where first. I that's where I'm, you know, like I'm trying to fine tune that process right now. I mean, we have a process for it, but you know, sometimes you can never get the um, you know, the things that you can't the unforeseen things. Somebody right. gets sick, uh, somebody has to go home early. 
So small things become big things. Yeah. The, the big problems get even worse. Yeah. Right. So it's, you got to, the things that used to not matter as much now they're, they're pulling your attention. Yeah. You know, but you know, I, I'm fortunate enough that all of my guys downstairs and my brothers downstairs is, you know, they, you know, they pull each other. We, we help each other to pull each other's weight. So if somebody drops, somebody picks it up. Oh yeah. Right. So with right. no questions asked, like Brian, dude, Brian's a rock star. Like I took Brian away from PPF because I want him to manage the shop. But when something is like that needs to get done, he'll just, Hey, like, he don't even tell me. He's like, I just see him installing, you know, just to help out. You know I mean? That's one of the key things that I have downstairs. What I'm blessed with is everyone downstairs is willing to sacrifice and help and try to get the job done properly. How did you create that culture? Uh, I, man, I'm, I, I'm Filipino, man. So I'm very, you know, my manners are f from the Philippines, bro. Like, nah, they, you know, hold on. I, I, I am no if, bullshit. If you man. ever come, <laughs> if you ever come to Coca California to visit Art to Shine, go ask Joe, hey, where do we need to go eat? Man, your hospitality, <laughs> me and Mike Norton still talk about when you took us to the laundry. <laughs> That's a Michelin star restaurant. If you guys don't go to California, if you don't know what a Michelin star restaurant is, <laughs> you got to go eat with Joe. Well, you're funny as hell. No, but, you know, I, Ever since I started with, you know, anyone you or my, everyone downstairs right now, I was like, I won't ask him to do something that I won't physically do myself. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to ask him, like, hey, bro, can you wipe my ass? No. <laughs> do that, right? <laughs> but I've seen people like, my, you know, you know, this other person that used to work here used to treat people like crap. Uh, yeah. But then at the end of the day, like, that's going to create, like, a bad environment. Like, you know, you walk in the shop, like, damn, you seen the morale of the shop just go down. Right. So like for me, it's like, you know, I, I treat everyone like how I want to be treated. I treat everyone like like they're my family, because at the end of the day, man, I spend more time with them than my my, my, my own wife, oh, my daughter, my mom. I spend more time with them. Right. So, I mean, that's just that's one of my biggest things is like if you guys have, you know, has more than two, three, however many employees you guys have, like treat them properly because they're, they're the ones who's making the shop, you know, successful. That's the, that's the truth, bro. Hundred percent. Like because without anyone, any of those guys downstairs, I'm a nobody. I can't yeah, do everything I mean, by myself. I love what you said there too, because you, you spend more time with these people, right? Just I, I feel the same way about my team. And if I can't imagine sitting in a meeting with this guy or just shooting shit after a Zoom call, for example, after an interview or something, it, it's kind of it drains you. Yeah. If you have that one person on your team that you just know is is uh, the rotten apple. It really does spoil the rest of the bunch. It drains yeah. your energy. It drains all the creativity. Yep. And you, sometimes you don't really notice until you have to lift them. When it takes time away from what you're, what you need to get done, because your mind is just like uh, polluted with that, you know, that idea. Are they doing what they said they're gonna do? Yeah. Do I have to double check mm -hmm. their work? Yep. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, you know, and that's the thing. Like, I trust everyone downstairs, but I still have a quality control. Right. Right. So, like, even though I know my guys are top notch and. You know, I mean, we're human. Sometimes they'll make a mistake and they got to fix something, right? right? But I don't got to check their work, but I, I do have a process of my quality control. Like, no cars leave my PPF room unless it's completely sealed. Right, right. Right, you know, stuff right. like that. Like, you know, the tent department. It doesn't leave the tent department until everything's completed. Like, panels are back on if something was removed. Um, the rail's on. You know, watermark is removed. Uh, no blades inside. Um, you know, before it leaves there, before it goes to the other department, it has to be 100%. And then I have checklist. I have a checklist. Um, you know, but Brian has to sign off on it. Brian says everything got done, and he signs off. Well, what's the hardest aspect of QC for you? Uh when things, you know, honestly, when things go down to the wire. Yeah, I mean, it, it happens to everyone. Don't lie. You're bullshitting me if you if you say that doesn't happen to you. It, <laughs> it, it, it always does. It's, you know, some projects do run to the wire. Yeah. Like it just ends like, oh my God, I got to get this car done today. And I have like five more hours left. Yeah. To like work. Right. I mean, that's the hardest part about it. Um, I typically. Would so going fast and being efficient without. Yeah. 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 Going, without being sloppy. Yeah. But you know, for me, I, I have the tendency to, if I feel like it's going to compromise my quality and my reputation. And this is my part of my intake process. I tell my clients straight up, this is, I gave me seven days for the job. Right. Okay. But during quality control, if I find something or my technicians find something, I'm going to call you and say, Hey, I'm going to have to hold the card in an extra day or two. Right. I'd rather have you get mad at me for holding the car to make the card look perfect rather than releasing the card, knowing there's a problem and you notice it. And, and then now you come back and he's like, Hey, yeah, how come you didn't tell me about this? Uh, uh, so that's what I do. I, I'd rather have that happen, you know? So now, I mean, earlier we were talking about kind of looking around the corner and how you can kind of see problems 
or you see trends before they're coming. I feel like you really have a knack for that. What do you think, what are, what are some of the ambitions for 2024? Where's Art Design going or what are you going to, is there anything you're going to experiment with this year? Um, yeah. Uh, these right here. Tell me about this. Um, so this is our, uh, this is our Art, uh, Art Design X uh, coding um, line. You got to get a good zoom in <laughs> on there, Apollo. So, you got a good one right there. There it is. So fun fact, um, Art to Shine, like I said, it's a, it's a bespoke company from Singapore. Um, every pour, every mix, every bottling process is all done in-house. Uh -huh. um, Singaporean government actually funds Art to Shine uh, for the R&D, which is, that's the most expensive part about when you're wanting to make something. Wow. Top universities in uh, Singapore is assisting with the R&D as well, too. So, you know, we're consistently making the products a lot better, uh, right. changing um, technologies, adding new technologies. So, like... For instance, going back to our flagship coating, which is our nanographene, um, you know, we're the first in, in the industry to ever come out with a heat dispersion property. All coatings have UV protection. This one does too. But we took it one step more into adding um, a heat dispersion property. So heat and uh, water, bird dropping, whatever it may be, that's what well, that's what creates stains, right, into the coating layer. So our, our panels protected with our, any of our coating takes a lot longer to, to, to heat up. Um, now... The coming this year, we're actually adding carbon nanotubes into our coating. Carbon nanotubes is going to provide um, an anti-static feature. So it's going to stay, oh, okay. the sort of panels are going to stay cleaner a lot longer. Um, and then this Art Design X, uh, the Guardian is a graphene-based product. This is uh, t testing that's been going on for many, many years. This is made for solar panels, home, uh, automotive, marine, um, and, you know, electronics. Uh, so that's going to be one of the exciting new things that's coming out with Art to Shine. Um, and then the Repel, this is uh, same, you know, same uh, surface protection, but it's made made for like, you know, your your textiles, like cloth, suede, right, like right. our shoes, um, shoe store. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Uh, but yeah, so, you know, those are the things that we're coming out with. Um, and, you know, we're excited to see what the the reaction is uh, from the uh, from the masses and and our clients. So, I mean, I've been testing it. I made a video yesterday for Repel on my Art to Shine jacket. Unfortunately, I can't post it because it's not out yet, but it was repelling like a shit ton of water. Okay, cool. So we have an exclusive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We yeah, have an exclusive sure. here. No, it's unreleased. That's for sure. Great. Um, Yeah, and, you know, we're, we're trying to get there. We're trying to, like, you know, gain traction with awareness. Uh, we're attaching ourselves to companies that are uh, going to be a great partner and, um, and, and a beneficial strategy to, like, Get awareness. Um, Inosa Tech is one of them. There it is. There yeah, it is. yeah, that, was, that happened recently. Uh, yeah, that, this was freaking two years in the making with Greg. Um, you know, we started a, a relationship with Greg, and I just started talking with him. And you know, they were using another uh, coding company in the past. That's what that was their go-to. Um, and you know, I, I started pitching the idea, sending them samples. Um, and you know, two years later. We released it at SEMA last year, and this is uh, in those text graphene coding. Congratulations on all made that. by us. <laughs> now, which one's on my car? Because, I, as you know, I just got a, a Model X. Um, I love the car, by the way. It's incredible. You stole the color from me, by the way. No, no, no. no, 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 no. So he copied. You stole the color from copied. me, by the way. Well, shout out Let's to get it right. Shout out to Joe Tabati and OC Detailing, <laughs> right? Because Joe OC, he yep. wrapped it. And then we discovered this. And this Joe coded it. <laughs> and then Joe, so I brought it here, and I think it's the nanographene, yes, right? this is a nanographene. Incredible. Coding. Second car I've had on, uh, had nanographene coding on it. I think it's it's an incredible product. Um, it sounds like this is, is it, would you say this is the number one focus for you in 2024? Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the, uh, the the Guardian. Just everything. But yeah, the, I mean, the pretty, product side. For sure, yeah. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to build uh, a sales team around our, our sales because i mean right now you know it's just it's just us doing it right i mean right. we we gained you know pretty good traction for the past four years just by you know organically doing it now we're doing marketing we hired somebody uh another group to actually handle the product side yeah you have some big guys using your coatings now yeah I mean, absolutely and you know personally what i'm really interested to hear is the i think you said marine side the home the home appliance side no, the guardian yep the guardian right so yeah nobody is really broken into the the home side of things you know i have a big big interest and a lot of experience in the flat class world i come from a home improvement background as sure. well so that that right there someone's going to crack that code yeah, are you so, guys going to you guys going to crack that code yeah or? we're working with um you know a local um like home improvement store um and you know we're, we're testing out the products i mean uh, 
no product from Artisan ever gets released without R&D and data. That's good. Um, so with solar panels, they're seeing anywhere from like 18 to 25% gains on a monthly basis on kilowatt solar intake. Panels. Yep. Yeah, because this one has anti-soiling properties so that it does stay cleaner longer. Uh, the perception and, and assumption of like people owning solar panels, rain cleans it and does it. So what, is, what do you think is going to be the bigger trend? Do you, out of these three, w one is marine coating for, for yachts and, and boats. Two would be appliances for home, for homeowners, residential, mm -hmm. right? Maybe there's some commercial appliances, I'm not sure. Or is it the solar side, coating for solar panels? What's uh, bigger? We, our, I, I think like- It's a hard our, question, right? Yeah, That's it is. Question. But you know, we, 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 we tried to start off with solar uh, because, you know, California, right? So if solar panel is kind of one of the biggest thing, and we were looking into like the, the data with that, there's a lot of people, like I think you guys helped us with that. There was a lot of people searching for solar panel cleaning. Right. There, right. That's a huge market. That's a huge market. But, you know, a lot of people think that when you're scrubbing the solar panel, that's going to clean it. But it really doesn't because there's contaminants that built in and, you know, and stays on top. Oh, yeah. So you got to properly, like, you prepare it. Glass, like you car. can destroy the panel. Yep. Right. You got to, you know, you have to, like, clay bar it. You have to put some sort of protection on it because, like, the degradation, the degradation of, like, you know, the solar panels after, like, it gets stained is very porous. It blocks off a lot of, like, you know, um, light go through. Right. Um, so with our coating, it does, it will help stay cleaner longer and it's going to provide you with a lot Someone's more. Someone's going to crack that cut. I hope it's hopefully it's our, hopefully it's us. But you know, this is like the first of its kind. Well, this is a first of this kind to actually have testings. There are solar panel coatings out there. And you know, you're seeing this in the PPF industry, this, this, uh, this diversification, right? You're seeing it with the, with the paint protection film side of things. Now you're hearing about it, it being applied on everything. You're hearing it for the home, the home side, uh, countertops, right? Um, there's uh, there's a big push for yachts right now for paint protection from as well. So, so that's definitely something to look out for. Well, funny thing, I don't know if we have to, I don't know if I could say this, but I was talking to Kurt uh -huh. from Legend. Uh -huh. I'm a big Legend guy. Yeah. Um, and I, I was actually talking to him about putting PPF on solar panel and he got his wheels turning. So I, I guess we're going to look into that. Because you know, there's a lot of innovation in the space right now. Yeah, there's a lot of innovation. There's a lot of eyes on our on our industry. Um, I mean, we've seen it happening, right? But now, now it's now it now it's here. You know, we were actually talking about colored PPF. Mm -hmm. Is that something that's on the studio side, right? Yep. We talked about the product side, but on the studio side, your shop side, is that? Yeah, and I mean, th that's that's popular right now. That's what people is asking for, right? Because back then, I mean, shit. I, I mean, I'd do it again. I mean, I was getting like fifteen. K for, for like a vinyl and PPF full car PPF jobs, Shoot. right? But it's double the work for my guys, but they get paid for it regardless, right? But if you can now, two birds with one stone, that's a lot better, right? Right. right so right. I mean, um, we've been we've been using it. Uh, we had a couple of brands that we were trying out. We were super happy with it. Um, and I know this is going to be a more of an ask from clients, especially oh, yeah. with the cyber trucks coming out. Uh, you can't leave it bare. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna give I'm gonna give a secret out to the community here because. We're MediaTune's a unique situation. And earlier, when he was saying turn on MediaTune, it's it's advertising. Google, yeah. YouTube, Facebook, right? All the all the paid advertising sites. Well, we have campaigns in every major market all over the country. Sure, you know this. Yeah. But what I I don't think I shared with you yet is is we started seeing colored PPF, full body PPF, and you know our colored PPF increase in search terms pop up in every major market. I mean, look, last year we Everywhere. did. Remember, we did a colored PPF versus vinyl marketing, and that one. Yeah, one hop don't, give change, away, don't give that away. Don't give that away. That's after the. That's after the interview. We'll get that after. <laughs> I got I got I'm just joking. But, but um, but no. So a year ago, I, I didn't see it. I didn't see all these colored PPF searching. Well, creeds, colored, but, colored PPF was here like two thousand. I don't know. Don't quote me on this, but like eighteen, nineteen. Well, you would know. You've been yeah, in the game I, for yeah. a long time. But it's, it was a new technology at the time. Like I know GSWF was one of them. Um, that started this uh, with colored PPF. Yep, yep, yep. That came out with their, you know, simple colors. And fashion films. Yeah, fashion yeah, yeah. films, right. And then now there's, you know, Inozatech has their own uh, right, colored right. PPF. Pure PPF is an EVOS is another company that, um, you know, Mike and uh, Joe asked me to, eat the PPF on our cars. Yeah, that's what I got on my car. Me too. Um, sponsor me on the next one. Me too. Great what product, is, by the way. EVOS, right? Yeah, yeah sponsor my next one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, but yeah. So I think that that's going to continue to grow. And if you oh, ask definitely. me, I started seeing a lot more search inquiries um, and it's it's impressions, right? It's people who are looking for the service on Google, the largest website on the planet. Sure. 
I I started seeing a lot more of those search inquiries because there's very little thing there's very little data that we don't have. Like yeah. it is just thousands of pages and you know hundreds of thousands of people searching for all these different variations of paint protection film, right? We didn't start seeing that until Tesla announced the yeah, the Cybertruck for sure. I started seeing that on there too, but until Tesla announced that they're going to start installing colored PPF. Yeah. That's that was, you know, that was debatable in the industry. There was people that were saying, "Oh my God, this is horrible! That this doomsday!" You know, they hung I up mean, their flag. They're freaking charging to, five thousand to do it. You to, know what I mean? But here's Weird, the thing: bro. to me, that is marketing. No, that sure. is marketing. What, do you want? I'm going to take this from Mike Norton because I love what he says. Do you want a you know fifty percent of a grape, this small little industry, or do you want you know a smaller percentage of a massive watermelon? Yeah. I want the bigger bag. I want yeah. the bigger bag for everybody. The game's going to feel different. You're going to have to do some different things. But if you're in a bigger, if you're in the ocean, you're you're going to have more fish to catch compared to just being in a small pond. You know, you yeah. got to you got to think bigger. And this industry is growing. People are becoming more sophisticated. You know, the standard is 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 rising. Right, yeah, you have yeah. to raise your standard with it. But man, I mean, has everybody not made more money year over year? Uh, like I said, as I said this a while ago, man, I didn't think that this is like a profitable business back then I did it because I like doing it. Yep. You know what I mean? And look at, look at everything now. Right. I mean, I know that the other big shops that I've mentioned, I know what y'all make, man. So <laughs> <laughs> I know what y'all make uh, now, but you know, it's, it's really profitable. And, and that's why I see a lot of shops opening up because I, there's an opportunity for people uh, that wants to do something that they don't know what to do. I mean, this is a great opportunity. I mean, oh, yeah. you know, I yeah. mean, you guys are doing a great job, you know, out of a mastery, right? Like you guys are offering online classes, I mean, oh, wait till you see what's coming. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, did I tell you what's coming? No. Uh, Apollo, when is this When is this episode going to air? After the release? I'm just going to say it. <laughs> I'm just going to say it. I'm just going to put it in there. So we, we've we always had this commitment to make training new installers easier. Yeah. It, we have a massive installer shortage in the industry. And it's that's what happens when you have a growing industry and there's more demand. So... Our, one of our, our big audacious goals is that we want to help, we want to put a dent, we want to help solve the new, the, the, the new installer problem. We want to make it easier for shop owners to train new installers. We're known for the installers library, right? Yeah. We have over a hundred vehicles now. Hey, we were talking about that. What were we talking about, Paula? What do you call that? Um, the old school, like sit down for a week in front of a computer <laughs> and, a, and, a, and a TV to go watch their in, uh, manual. Onboarding videos. Yeah, yeah. There, yeah. hey, listen, that made giants, okay? I know it did. Those uh, made giant no, companies. For sure. I mean, we were talking about this a while ago. You go to a, you, you go to a class. I'm, I'm not knocking those classes. Right, the right. Three to five day classes, all hands on. That's that's cool. But you only retain and remember things what you remember in your head. Right. With the, with the stuff Great that time. you guys are doing, you guys can uh, you know the installer can go back and say, oh shit, I missed a step. Let me go back to it. And have access to all of these things, and I mean that's why I think that you guys are doing a great job. Man, that. I yeah, the, it's it's been a labor of love. You know, uh, sure. InStars Library has definitely tested us. It's it's really pushed us. But it's essentially for those who don't who who don't know what it is, it's a it's a subscription. It's on autoformaster.com, and there's over a hundred step by step PPF and window tint installation videos. I mean, it take it breaks it down so that it doesn't matter what kind of car comes in yeah, a G wagon. Sure. There's a Bugatti in there. There's every Tesla. If you want to know how to do a one piece, a one wide, it's on there, right? Yeah. You, you have front windshields, you have everything. All the most challenging cars is what we try and put in the library. Well, here's the thing. You know, that assumes that you know how to install film, mm -hmm. right? When that brand new car comes in, right? What was a new challenging car that came out? This year? Cybertruck. The Cybertruck, right? So that's in the works by the way. But when the Cybertruck comes in, do, and you're in front of that customer, you know in the back of your mind, okay, cool, it's in Out of Mastery's InStars library, I got this. And you're going to sell everything on that car. You're going to get everything. Well, I, I should have, sorry, I, before I forget, I should have recorded us doing it because, mind you, we're Asian, we're short, like, you know, I have, no, <laughs> I have no wingspan, right? And like feeding the film, like, you know, at first we didn't know what to do, but like, you know, top fed, bottom fed, right? Or, um, and then, or left to right. right? Yeah, yeah, So yeah, the yeah. first one we were like, trying to feed it uh, to the bottom, right? And we were like, the fuck are we doing? <laughs> like, ah. Reach it there, we're like, you know, but it, it was quite funny though. I mean, and that's the good thing about what, like with the, you guys' and stuff is like, they can like literally go back and it's like, oh shit, that's how you got to do it. So what's coming next is, is we seen that there's a small problem. The InStars library is just like you said, it, it shows you how to do it, but it assumes you already know how to install. Yeah. We have intro courses, but we found that it needs to be better. It needs to be more in depth. 
And we also needed to focus on training new installers from scratch yeah. in a short period of time. So we have a 90-day new installer roadmap. I won't say what type first, or I don't have all the answers. Yet. It might change. I just don't want to you know, put yeah. something out there that it changes. But a 90-day roadmap, a 90-day pl- blueprint to teach a new installer from nothing. And it is the most in-depth course that we've ever put together. So that's coming out really soon. And I'm super excited because... You know, Mike has watched and reviewed that thing. Apollo has watched and reviewed that thing so many <laughs> times. I have never, This it's been so frustrating, guys. It's been so frustrating. <laughs> I've never pulled videos as much as we've pulled these and replaced it and redone it and refilmed it and said, "Come." Apollo's laughing behind the camera right now because he knows that he's the one that has to keep nah, but giving like, me the bad news. <laughs> well, what I told Apollo is like, once you perfect one, just keep doing it. You know what I mean? Like, this is the hardest part right now is like trying to find like, the structure of it yeah and once you they, figure that out it's like everything's and the just structure that's what out. makes a scalable business yeah. right everybody is really good at getting to about half a million a year but getting to a million dollars a seven figure mark that's the challenge because now you can't wear all the hats you have to delegate you have to replace yourself with a sure. system you have to buy back your time so our attempt here is to get rid of you as being the installer like this that this course this 90-day course we want to make sure it's as easy as possible for the business owner to step back. to step back. Yeah, really, it's yeah. A lot of people are thinking like, oh, I don't, you know, I don't want to train an installer from scratch, or I don't want to train a new installer. I don't need. It. I could do it. I could do it on my own. No, you the, can't. The goal, <laughs> and it's the goal of the installer's library, right? The goal of the installer's library is to remove you as the trainer. Yeah, because once you train somebody, then you have to keep training and keep training and keep training. So what if you can buy back? Just a portion of your time, like yes, the installer's library teaches you how to do something and it makes it easier to install. But it's a system. Yeah. The goal is to put systems in play to get to seven figures. I work with, I mean, a, a good number now of three to five million dollar shops, right? And what I've pulled from them is they are masters at building great culture, building a team, putting a process in play that mm-hmm. doesn't need them, building managers, trusting their managers, sure. right? So this is just that another really big step forward that that we're looking. Yeah, at. and also too like getting into like what I'm realizing right now, getting to seven figures, like if I was still doing labor, I would have never reached a spot. I, I didn't think I, I, I don't think so. You know, um, tough. Very it's tough. tough. And, you know, adding more people, uh, team members into your staff. I mean, that's the only way you're going to scale. Like I, I was scared hiring people because I was going to be more responsible. Overhead's a lot higher. But as, as, as you're trying to scale, yeah, your overhead's going to go up as you, you, you know, you can pocket more money. Oh yeah, the day. But everything's bigger. Everything's you know, expenses bigger. are bigger. That problems are film, bigger. <laughs> that, you know that you, you, there's just so many problems. You know, and uh, growth. My favorite quote is, "Growth exposes your biggest weakness." Sure. A lot of people come in. They say, oh, "I want to double up." I'm like, okay, I could you know sell them the pipe dream. I could talk about how we can get leads and do all this kind of things. But usually, what ends up happening with me is I start telling them, "Well, here's the problems that you're going to run into." Are we prepared for that? Can you pull resources? Can you pull your focus? Can we build that out while we're building this out? Because man, it's it's painful. Yeah, it's 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 painful. I mean, that's why I you know that's why I got Brian to to start doing really what he's doing. That's what I found out. You know, crossing over to what we're making right now is like I can't manage and I can't do sales. You know, that's why I gave that up to Brian. Like, hey, you know, make the decision. You you follow me long enough. You've been with me for seven years. You know how I act. Right. You know, you don't got to call me on a daily basis. Call me if you really need something. Right. I'm going to let you fly. You got to, you got to trust them. You know what I mean? Like we got to say, you, you got to trust them. Um, they are going to make mistakes. Uh, but then as long as they learn from their mistakes, like my PPF guys, if, you know, if something happens to the PPF, like, you know, it didn't look good. I was like, dude, rip the film off. Yeah. Learn from it. I'm never going to get mad at you from learning. Right. But don't keep doing it. It's a dichotomy, right? right? It's like you have to enforce, you have to yep. make sure you, you have a high standard, but at the same time, you can't constantly beat them down. Correct. Right. It's, 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 a, it's somewhat of a balance, right? Well, also they can't keep doing the same thing. Right. Right. So there's a fine line with like, I'm not going to get mad at them for, you know, redoing something because they're not happy with it because they have the full authority to like rip one film off, but at least learn from it. Don't, re- don't do the same mistake again. At least like figure out what you, what happened, what you did wrong and don't do it. Brother, I appreciate you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Thank you for, for the interview. I mean, guys, check out Art to Shine, please. And, uh, you know, I, I think we're going to have to do this again in the future. I'm excited to see what Time 24 looks like. <laughs> I was I, I was a little bit surprised when you did ask me to do this. Like, um, I know Aladdin was like, hey, I need you to go up to the growth conference. Fuck no. 
Like I I I I hate cameras. You don't want to speak on stage? No, heck no. And hey, like, there's gonna be some people. Listen, last time mean. I did these interviews, last time I did these interviews, it was because I don't put every speaker. Wishes. It's not gonna happen. I put every speaker nope. in an interview so people knew who was gonna speak at the conference. I mean, this is the first the one. The people of that you guys got over there are phenomenal. They did a great job. <laughs> I'll be in the background as one of the sponsors. Hey, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I want to see those comment sections blow up with Joe's name. <laughs> no, no, don't do that. Auto Film Growth Conference no. 2024. No, but I mean, um, reality, thank you so much for having me here. Um, this, this has been an honor. Apollo, thank you for flying down to Houston, even though I picked you up almost at one o'clock in the morning and it rained last night in San Francisco Airport. Uh, thank you. Uh, but, you know, um, please, if you guys are in the Bay Area, uh, if you guys want to check out our shop, just visit us. You know, if you don't want to talk shop, um, I don't know everything, but I do know a lot and I can give you some advices. Um, you can bounce ideas. Um, and if you guys are here watching this and you guys have a car, you want to check out the shop, we're located in Concord. Um, I'm sure they're going to drop a link down there uh, for our website and address. And please also make sure to check out Autofill Mastery. If you guys are starting a shop and you guys are trying to scale, uh, scale your business, this is a great way for you guys to you know, have your installers literally learn from the masters. Um, I'm not there because I'm not one of them. Uh, but, you know, Mike Noring and everyone else is part of it. Like, you know, that they, they built a reputation for themselves. And they're like I said, they're truly masters at their craft. So thank you. We'll see you guys next time.